everyone, welcome to introduction to division. So again, different ways of sharing and showing division is the symbol, divide, share and sharing between equal groups. So again, typical thing that I tend to start with is using the idea of food, sharing it between a best friend and you uh, for a party and going one for me, one for you. So for example, if I wanted the idea of four and I want to share it between two people, make sure you've got four to start off with, one for me, one for you one for me oh i haven't finished yet one for you how many have i got two have you got the same yes it's equal so we have two each when they're more confident using actual objects again you could draw it so for example if i now want to do six shared between two people one two three four five six i have three they have three six shared or divided by two equals three I could also show that as a bar model. So for example, my part, part, whole. Here is my whole number six. I've shared it into two equal groups, each with three in it. Now again, you could actually investigate numbers up to 20. Which numbers could you share between you and a friend? Are there any numbers that won't? Numbers that will? And could you create a statement or a rule to describe why these numbers will or won't without having an equal pair in between them? So we can also then start to investigate different ways of sharing. So a really easy way of doing this is just picking one number and sharing it into different groups. So for example, if I had my six, if I shared it first of all between two, six, investigate can I share it between three, six, can I share it between four. Again, you can use equipment or you could do drawing. So here's my six. I'm going to share it between two people. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's equal. Yes, I can share it. This time, six sweets shared between three. One, two, three. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I can. Equal groups. Now I'm going to investigate my next number divided by four. One, two, three, four groups. Let's see, sharing six, one for me, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, they're not equal, it doesn't work. So you can work your way systematically through testing numbers, even under 10, to say, can I divide it by one, two, three, four, all the way up to that number. And again, you can show it uh, on a bar method to see where you're up to as well. Now, you can also show your work on a number line. So actually seeing how many groups will fit into that number. So for example, if I had my number line to 10. Two, one. Okay, so imagine I want to do the calculation 10 divided by two. I'm going to start on 10, I'm going to do bunny hops of counting backwards in groups of two. It must always be equal parts. So here I have one, two, circle the number, one, two, circle the number, one, two, circle the number, one, two, and back. And it's really important that you remember that careful hopping between one number to the next, not over counting. So this time I'm going to count how many groups did I go back in? One, two, three, four, five. Five times I landed on the number from my starting number, five groups. Again, this is, can be going along with the fact that when you're on a hundred square, doing the same thing. So it's really important, a really good opportunity to not only learn by rote counting, so two, four, six, eight, ten, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, ten, twenty, thirty, is to then show it on here as well. So when you're actually circling the numbers, realising that you're adding on, so one, two, one, two, whether you're counting in tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whether you're counting in your fives. So again, here you can then get the children to start to discuss, well, what patterns can you see? So here, my five times table, it always ends in a five or a zero. Look where it is, the hundred square. My 10 times table, right on the end column, always ends in a zero. My twos, every other column, it always ends in a two, four, six, eight. 
eight <laughs> or a zero? Is it odd? Is it even? And discussions about that point. So, as I said, that you can learn this by rote. You can also start to learn your times tables using your fingers. So I've said to you before that these can represent ones or anything else. So, for example, I could go two, four, six, eight, ten. 5, 10, 15, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So you can then start to look at the fact that there is then a link between the two. So when we look at our division, okay, you can use it by counting forwards and backwards because it is linked to multiplication. It is the inverse operation of it. So for example, here I might have my factor family. I know that 20, uh, sorry, I know that 10 times 2 equals 20. If I do the inverse, or as my children call it, flip-flop, then I can therefore know that 2 times 10 equals 20. I'm now going to be using the same numbers, but now my answer is going to start at the beginning. I've done the inverse operation. 20 divided by, I must use the same numbers that are in my starting calculation, 2 there we go, what's my last number left? Equals 10. Start with my answer again. 20 divided, shared by this time, the opposite say flip-flop, 10 equals 2. So now we have a factor family which shows how we can use our multiplication to help us work out our division. It is the same effect as counting in. So where I had 20, I could literally count forward in my twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I had 10 equal groups. Now I can also draw this uh, uh, with pictures as well. So effectively making it into some sort of array looking like. So for example, here I have my 10 objects. I want to see 10 divided by shared into groups of five. How many uh, groups will that be? How many lots of five will there be in a group? So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put them into a group or a bag. One, two, three, four, five. Count how many groups? One and a one. Two groups in total. Okay, so lots of ways that you can practice this uh, pictorially, counting on using your fingers, lots of online games and songs to practice, because eventually the aim is, particularly with your twos, fives and tens, is that if you were given them out of order, uh, so starting to begin with, with practicing in order, so 1 times 10 is, 2 times 10 is, 3 times 10 is. So eventually when you get to the point where you could be asked 3 times 2, 8 times 5, 10 times 10, you're going to be super confident. Hope that's helped.